as a government entity and corporate organization that is looking to build and grow its startup program, uh, there are key elements that you need to factor in into your planning and execution early on in order to uh, make, sh make sure that your uh, program succeeds, including specific success factors and KPIs for measurement uh, and, uh, and validation. And I've been involved in very different programs uh, and accordingly I've, I'm sharing from my experience from limitations that I've seen. And uh, I thought what better way to do it than with the backdrop of the uh, uh, lovely city of San Francisco uh, in order to look at uh, startups and ecosystem that we can look, look into growing uh, in, the, in the Middle East. Objective of the program. Why are we doing this? I know it's hot in terms of uh, collaboration uh, with entrepreneurs and startups, but there needs to be clear objective, not uh, lofty goals as I commonly see in programs with vague titles. They have to be very clear. So uh, if, uh, are we looking to create jobs? Are we looking to improve certain industries such as transportation or insurance or the financial sector? Uh, very specific uh, objectives definitely help uh, structure the program and attract the right people and partners uh, to work with the program. So defining that in a very specific, straightforward way. Structure of the program involves how do startups apply, what is the selection criteria, who from your organization uh, needs to be involved, what type of partners do you need uh, to involve with you, uh, what mentors uh, would, uh, uh, would uh, need to be involved, uh, how frequently do we meet, uh, what's the application process, uh, what are uh, key deliverables and key milestones that need to be set by uh, participants in the program, uh, at what point do you need your upper management to be involved? Is it just during ceremonial events in the beginning and the end? Or uh, do they need to be involved in the middle? Uh, how frequently are they involved? What type of feedback are you looking for them? So those are key aspects from a structure perspective, from a program structure perspective, that, uh, that it's important to outline from the beginning, to set expectations with uh, the different stakeholders, uh, if there's somebody putting in the money, uh, management, uh, the startups themselves, the mentors, the partners. Finding the startups, how to source the startups. There are different ways to do it. The two most common ways that I come across is, one is a partnership with uh, others in the startup ecosystem, uh, such as incubators, accelerators, uh, venture capital firms, uh, certain colleges that have entrepreneurship classes. So uh, that involves uh, identifying who they are and then reaching out to them one, one, one at a time. It could be introductions via your network or a cold outreach to them. Uh, they're, they tend to be more open than others to uh, take meetings with, with, with people that they haven't met before. So reaching out to them directly. Keep in mind that this takes time. So you, you need time to identify them. You need time to reach out to them, time for them to schedule a meeting with you. So this aspect will need to be done uh, uh, well in advance. And also when you meet with them, you need to have with you clear, clear uh, expectations from them. We'd like you to nominate X startups. We're trying to solve these types of problems. This is the mechanism of the program. This is what's in it for you as an incubator accelerator or university or so on. So those need to be done for the meeting. This way, when you have that first meeting, it's enough to establish that relationship. One meeting with clear uh, uh, expectations from them and clear benefits uh, to them and the startups that they send your way is enough to uh, uh, get them involved in the program and get them to start to uh, uh, send you uh, referrals for uh, uh, entrepreneurs and startups. Uh, another common way involves uh, running an ad campaign, an ad campaign uh, on Facebook, Instagram, Google and others in order to raise awareness about the program and uh, get people to participate. For that, you need digital assets such as a clear landing page that involves who needs to apply, what's the application process. So there needs to be clear messaging there uh, and you have to pay attention to small things like what is the primary message I'm trying to give them, not everything about the program, but the primary message I'm trying to give them who am I trying to attract? How do I target those? So you need the right partnership in order to, to target, you need the right settings and targeting on Facebook, Instagram and others in order to target the, uh, the startups uh, to, for them to know about your program and apply. So those are the, uh, so partnerships with, the, uh, with others in the startup ecosystem, uh, such as incubators, accelerators, uh, university programs, venture capital firms. Uh, uh, co-working spaces, uh, 
in addition to uh, running digital ad campaigns for raising awareness about the program, uh, targeting certain cities and uh, that, that are of interest for you, for people to apply in. Success criteria, how would we say that this program has succeeded? It is very important that you as a program manager for the government organization or corporate organization who's running this sort of program, it's very important that you set the tone and the success criteria for this. Because if you don't, um, somebody from management will and it will be a high level one because they're not necessarily involved as much as you are. So it's very important that you set the criteria for this and the criteria needs to be multi-tiered. It cannot only be number of startups who were shortlisted, two or three at the end. It needs to have uh, uh, the, the full flow of it. So for example, how many people did we raise awareness to about the program? So, uh, uh, so you can count that by how many people visited your website, how many people uh, uh, viewed videos that you've shared, uh, email inquiries that you've gotten and so on. So that awareness, uh, uh, quantifying awareness is uh, one uh, success indicator and for that I'd have a target and and the actual this way you can you can measure towards the end of the program uh, the delta between uh, the two you could look at uh, how many startups applied so not vetted and, for, uh, and filtered but how many startups actually applied uh, what countries did they apply from uh, uh, how frequently did they apply did they apply at the beginning and the end so those are certain success criteria that that you would look at uh, for uh, uh, for that aspect. How many mentors did we sign up? That's another success factor. Um, how many partners did we sign up who are involved with us? How many uh, uh, mentor meetings have we done? How many uh, demo days have we done? How many uh, uh, orientation sessions have we done? Uh, how many posts on social media related to that? How many videos were created? So each of those are success criteria for the program. So you'd, you'd have uh, that indicator, target, target and actual. And once you set those, you'll be able to measure and benchmark from the beginning. How to vet the startups? It is very important to properly vet the startups. I've been, I've been asked to come in to judge on uh, certain programs. And when I come in as a judge and I look at the shortlisted three or four startups who are going to be a part of the program, I wouldn't accept any of them because they do not they, they do not meet uh, certain criteria that are important for that program to uh, to succeed. So it's very, very important that the vetting process for startup be uh, well done. And I and I suggest you involve other uh, uh, entrepreneurs and specialists from the market, not just you as a as a government or corporate uh, or organizer of this, because you need people who see startups every day, deal with them every day. So one of the venture capital firms, that would be a good candidate. Uh, 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 mentors to, to other entrepreneurs, those are other candidates as well. So it's important that you have the right people who are filtering them. And second, you would tie that back to the program. Is your program about creating jobs? Is your program about uh, 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 improving a certain industry uh, in the country or uh, within your industry, such as insurance or financial? So based on those two criteria, so you have a, a good team that's uh, vetting them and filtering them. And then you have general criteria that this way you'd be able to select more uh, 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 startups that tend to create more jobs or tend to be more specialized in the financial sector. Preparing the startups. All of the founders I meet with in these programs, they assume that they're fine. They come in with the same deck they've had for the last year or two, the same uh, PowerPoint deck that they have for the last year or two, and they proceed to work with it and uh, they assume that works well for you and the different stakeholders. I strongly recommend that you spend effort and energy to prepare startups. So I've been brought in on programs where uh, my role is to look at uh, the program objectives, the, to look at uh, who are the stakeholders, the and then prepare the startups to pitch for that. And, it's, and I've always struggled with them to change their mindset. And this is why I'm flagging this, is they love their 20 slide deck. They don't want to change anything in it. They feel that it's, it's working for them. Get them to change only two or three slides is, is an effort. So I, uh, it's important that you spend to allocate time and effort from your side as part of the program in order to make sure that they are uh, they are being prepared and there are certain slides that are put in that are important for your stakeholders, for your demo day, for your management that, that, that's filtering this out, for matching them with other corporations. So that's, uh, those are very important uh, components from a preparation perspective so that when you have your public days uh, and events that uh, 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 the audience and the stakeholders feel that the uh, startups that you're showing and that you've been working with over the last uh, period have been prepared. It's not it's not you filtering out two or three and just putting them in front of everybody and, and, and uh, wasting everybody's time. 
procurement when it comes to procurement especially if you're a government entity or corporate organization procurement are not used to working with startups uh, the programs that i've seen is they ask the startup for three years audited statements and the startup is a year and a half old uh, one year of those the founder was working out of, the, of his or her home uh, they don't have uh, financial statements uh, and they unlikely have audited financial statements due to how young they are and how many times they've changed their business model uh, during the last uh, 18 months uh, in order as a start as a startup usually does so procurement uh, i strongly suggest you bring uh, on board procurement early on during the process so that you don't face uh, issues uh, towards the end when you shortlist the actual startup. So when you involve them in the beginning and they get to see what type of startups that, that, that you're looking at in terms of evaluation, uh, even during the vetting process, and then uh, working with them on what are flexibilities that they'll be able to give you because these startups don't have the audit financial statements. They have not existed for, some of them have not existed for three or four years, like the procurement asks. Uh, they don't have the financial structure or the, the proper governance internally in order to better address procurement uh, especially that procurement is used to dealing with these large organizations that are very well funded, very well established. They have dedicated people to deal with procurement. And this is absolutely not the case with the startups that, that, that you'll be looking at. For the event itself, uh, I strongly recommend you look at it as before the event, the day of the event and after the event. Most of the common mistakes I see is the day of the event is the core focus. And uh, what's, over, what's overlooked is the preparation up to the event, which means getting the press coverage before the event, not the day of the event. Uh, getting the uh, awareness about the program and the event well in advance, weeks in advance before, uh, before the event itself. Uh, making sure that the content for the presentations and so on are done much earlier before the event. And also I'd look at involving the startups to share with others in the ecosystem uh, what is it that they're doing uh, at, the, at your event and so on. So there's a lot of preparation before the event to create a lot of awareness for it. The day of the event, you're free to get an outsourced company to help you with the organization or, or do it yourself with your team. Uh, it, it, that, that's immaterial as long as you've done all of the preparation uh, uh, during uh, before that event. And during the day, it's very important that there, that there be live content shared on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter related to uh, what you're doing. And after the event, and I'm saying after the event as in the same day or the next day of the event not weeks after as is typical of uh, government and corporate programs where uh, it takes so long to get the foot video footage edited the articles to be written the approval process to be done it's important to do it when it's hot not uh, you know weeks after that as it's commonly seen documenting the process the program is your program that you'll be working with is likely anywhere from eight month, eight weeks to uh, to twelve uh, to twenty four weeks, and, and sometimes a year. So it's very important that not only the events, which are four, five, six during the whole program, are the ones that are promoted and broadcasted and, and informed. The process itself. So it's it's important to document the process itself, taking video footage, writing articles about the process of selecting the startups about who you brought in to help with the selection process, who's able to, to, to participate in this, what, what partners, what are the partners looking for. So articles and videos throughout this help really raise awareness for your program. And if you go back to the KPIs, the success factors we spoke about, awareness about your program is a key indicator aspect. So if you document the process throughout from the beginning, it definitely, definitely helps raise awareness, get you quality startups and contribute to the overall success of your program. So startup specific uh, uh, things to point out as well is if you have uh, startups that are more hardware centric, more than software centric, or if they're more business to business, it is important to keep in mind that these types of startups require an extensive amount of time more than the consumer facing startups. Consumer facing startups, if they have a, if they have a model and if they have a product, uh, they, can, they can go to market much quicker. But with business to business, with the business to business life cycles, it takes anywhere from four to six months to, to, to advance certain aspects. When it comes to hardware startups, you're looking at sourcing uh, the components, doing some R&D, uh, identifying partners in China and other countries in order to, to look at uh, doing the manufacturing and the assembly and so on. So they, those tend to be a little bit more complex. So when you have applicants in that, in that case, or if your core premise is on attracting uh, such startups, your program needs to be much longer, uh, much more extensive in terms of details and support because there's a time aspect that is specific to that type of business that you need to factor in.